Yesterday we talked about the qualities or the benefits of sustaining sila by way of the five precepts. There are much to talk about in this about this subject. If one is not able to sustain it and control oneself, there are many flaws, disadvantages, one is suffer to, one is bound to suffer many losses. On the other hand, if one is able to control oneself with the practice of this sila, one is bound to realize much benefit. And also we talk about the factors leading to the transgression of each of these training of sila. And uh, of course there are many things uh, which lead to the breaking and tearing of these precepts. At this point, time doesn't allow us to elaborate on this point. We can only touch on this subject in an ordinary way. So yesterday we talked about ordinary benefits of the practice of sila. Also one is able to win victory over the transgressive forms of defilements with the practice of the sila thus subduing or overcoming the enemies, internal enemies in this case, and be free from dangers. We explained this yesterday. And by understanding the benefits of the five precepts, one will be able to sustain this faith and confidence, progress, one's faith and confidence will progress. As one knows and, or real, and realizes the benefits, one is bound to, in, in, bound to progress in one's faith and confidence. That is the nature of human being. For instance, when one is doing certain business, if the products, if the product one produces is a popular one and saleable one, it'll bring many, it'll bring, it'll bring much profit. Knowing that one will expand one's business from one product to many products, so that it will bring about much benefit, much profit. Just as we would uh, expand the business in ordinary life to make more and more profit, so do in the practice of good deeds, spiritually good deeds. As we realize the benefits from the practice of basic wholesome deeds, we would gradually expand it to do better and better. Deeds. Thus expanding our field of kusala, good deeds, bringing about, by right, the practice of good deeds, these good deeds will bring about blamelessness and purity. By controlling oneself, one also is controlling, one also is uh, giving benefit to others so that others will realize peace and happiness. In this way, this is dual benefit, the benefit for oneself and others. Coming back to this young devotee, he was, he practiced this kusala and he realized the benefits, understanding the benefits of the practice, he would expand his field of 
practice to do more advan- to, to realize more and more advantage, more and more benefits. Hence, uh, he requested for additional activities, additional good deeds besides the five precepts. So the teacher gave him the ten precepts. Some people would indulge in the excessive form of negative emotions, Rava Dosa Moha, and expand their domain, leading to many problems, such as when one country is not satisfied with one of the leaders of that country, are not satisfied with one country of their with one country alone, they would expand their territories, indulging in this extreme form of negative emotions that has been uh, in the world since the beginning of history. Nowadays, it is, it is worse nowadays. If uh, one cannot uh, sustain these five precepts, one is bound to be degraded. If, however, one can practice with wholesome roots, aloba, adrasa, amoha, non-greed, non-hatred, non-delusion, and with loving kindness and compassion, reasoning at the same time, or inter- uh, practicing this intellectual reasoning, then one is, one is said to be expanding one's territory of wholesomeness, kusala, thus leading to peace and happiness. If one expands the domain of akusala and wholesomeness, people are bound to be affected and bound to suffer because of the action as a result of the action of these fools. So, these are the ten uh, unwholesome deeds, namely three unwholesome deeds by body, four verbal unwholesome deeds, and three mental unwholesome deeds. When one indulges in this, wherever one goes, there will be affliction, oppression, like things are on fire, when fire burns, it will leave behind only soot and ash, nothing beautiful. So, if one does that, then one will be destroying one's moral conduct, such is the action of the fools, and the world is bound to suffer. If, however, one is able to sustain or abstain from these ten unwholesome deeds, that's what he does, and behave, conduct one's physical, verbal, mental behaviors in the right way, then things will become satisfactory. If only half of the world can sustain these five precepts, it will be good enough. So, either if one sustains, or one abstains from wholesome deeds, that he does, or practices the five precepts, these will become the standard of measurement to define wise and fools, to define human beings, whether they are wise or fools. So it is important as human being to sustain this basic conduct, moral conduct, and uh, not being able to, not indulging in the negative emotions, one will be able to overcome the internal enemies, thus not only controlling oneself, but also causing peace and happiness in others. That's why Buddha said that wherever the wise goes, 
there will be peace and happiness. In this way, one will, one will become real human being, or one will be behaving like a human being, thus will not cause any suffering in others, if only one is able to sustain these five precepts. From five precepts, uh, uh, he jumped from he jumped to ten precepts, committing the eight precepts. There are two kinds of eight precepts: ordinary eight precepts and Ajiva Chamka Sila. This is also eight precepts. Eight precepts with right livelihood as the eighth, or alternative eight precepts. As for human beings, as for us, we must sustain this Ajiva Tamaka Sila, that is alternate eight precepts, or eight precepts, with the uh, right livelihood as the eighth. Then only we are said to be purified uh, by way of virtue, Sila, Sila Visodhi. And this uh, Ajiva Tamaka Sila, we are to abstain from three kinds of physical misconduct, namely killing, stealing, sexual misconduct, which are all involved in, which are all contained in five precepts. So, as in, in the ordinary five precepts, we have seen from false speech. This also is included in the Ajiva Ramaka Sila alternate eight precepts, but three other, not, uh, uh, the five precepts does not include three other things, physical misconduct or physical um, uh, verbal abstention, which are contained in the alternate eight precepts, Ajivata Makasila. That means out of four, verbal misconduct or abstaining, abstaining from full verbal misconduct, we have one verbal misconduct, namely false speech. So we abstain from that. This also is contained in five precepts as well as in the eight precepts. Now, what are those three remaining precepts, uh, verbal misconduct? Then, only when we are able to sustain the verbal conduct, or abstain from verbal misconduct, we'll be uh, practicing what is known as samavacha, right speech. Just as we abstain from false speech, we should also abstain from malicious speech. Abstaining from malicious speech, we should indulge in friendly talk, friendly conversation. Then only we will be sustaining this uh, uh, right speech. And in addition, we should speak in a nice way, in a sweet way, instead of in a harsh way. That is another thing. Then only we will be uh, practicing samavacha, right speech. And thirdly, when we are speaking uh, in a nice and sweet way, this should not be done uh, as uh, by pretension. It should be it should be done in a sincere way. Then only it will be right speech. So also, uh, in a third way, uh, thirdly, we should abstain from meaningless talk, meaningless conversation. Instead of meaningless conversation, we should indulge in meaningful conversation. So, only when we practice these three trainings, together with, it will be four together with four speech, will we be able to practice or sustain the right speech, samavacha. So, in this way we have three physical conduct and four verbal conduct. So in this eight precepts, known as Ajiva Tamakasila, that is eight precepts, 
with right livelihood as the eighth. In the case of the eighth one, that is the right livelihood, sustaining this right livelihood or observing this right livelihood means we are not to lead or earn our living by killing, stealing, false speech and so on. Then only we will be sustaining this Sama Vacha, the eight precepts. Then only it will be Sama Ajiva, the right livelihood. Now right livelihood constitutes livelihood in an ordinary way without indulging in these killing, stealing and lying. We should uh, pursue such occupations like ordinary occupation, profession, as a service to the government, but not including military service. Then only we will be practicing the right livelihood. This constitutes the eight alternate precepts or Ajivasamaka Sila, the eight precepts with right livelihood as the eighth. Only when we are fulfilled with that, only when we are able to sustain that, we will be practicing the purity of virtue, that is Sila Visodhi. When we are practicing the high level discipline on the way of mindfulness, the practice of five precepts is good enough. However, it will be more fulfilled, more satisfactory if one is able to sustain this Ajiva Tamakasila, this alternate eight precepts, or eight precepts with right livelihood as the eighth. Because we will, because we will be practicing sila meginga, the morality path out of the noble path of eight constituents. We are said to be sustaining this samma kamanda by abstaining from three physical misconduct, such as samma kamanda, which means right action. We will be observing this as part as one of the uh, constituent of the Eightfold Path. Then, if we are able to sustain this verbal conduct, then we will be also practicing Samma Vacha, the right speech, which also is one of the constituents of the Eight Noble Path, of Eight Constituents. And another constituent is Samma Ajiva, the right livelihood, because in the eight precepts, uh, uh, in the eight precepts is this right livelihood. In this way, by these three things, namely sama kamanda, sama ajiva, sama vacha, sama ajiva, right action, right speech, and right livelihood, uh, we are said to be practicing the sila maganga basic sila meganga, that is the path of morality or morality path, which is the constituent of the eight, uh, noble path of each constituent or a full path. Hence, as for the practicing yogis, they should at least be able to practice this ajiva ramakasila, which is more satisfactory. And even if they are living an ordinary life, they should be able to observe this Ajiva Tamaka Sila. So we have uh, eight precepts, two kinds of eight precepts, namely Ajiva Tamaka Sila, which we have just talked about, that is eight precepts with the right livelihood as the eighth, or sometimes we call it alternate eight precepts. And ordinary eight precepts, which we call Uposata Sila. It is also H, the same figure. So what is the difference? The difference is that in the case of the first one, namely Ajiva Tamagasila, 
we have seen from sexual misconduct out of the three physical misconduct as for uposada sila normal intercepts we even abstain from sexual relationships that is the difference in the case of ajiva chamaka sila a couple can live as usual whereas in the case of uposada sila they have to abstain from sexual relations at all now the in the age alternate eight percepts one can take food in the afternoon but uh, it doesn't contain abstention from drugs and intoxicants or drinking alcohol so what is the difference the difference is that one has abstention from uh, intoxicants and the other has doesn't contain the percept to abstain from intoxicants so if one can one drink alcohol not so if one takes intoxicants then this is prohibited by kamisu mechachara that is abstention from sexual uh, misconduct because the kamisu mechachara means this uh, abstention from sense objects karma gunas sense of objects this intoxicants also is included or mentioned can be uh, listed under this sense of pleasure of sense of pleasure of taste or taste uh, pleasure pleasure of taste so in the sense of pleasures not only the contact between the female male and female but also uh indulging in drinks so it is involved in five uh courts of sense of pleasure kama gunas therefore this uh, intoxicants abstention from intoxicants is mentioned in the abstention from sexual misconduct kama sumacha chara so this solves the problem about whether one can take intoxicants if one is observing ajiva ramaka or not one cannot take intoxicants as for some people they just try to make excuses by saying that uh, this uh, taking of intoxicants or abstention from intoxicants is not mentioned or is not included in the 10 uh, unwholesome deeds that it does so uh, in the practice of meditation even if one does not abstain from intoxicants one is not uh, you know uh, breaking up the one's moral virtue sila so they would take drinks at least they might think take beer as for yogis practicing high level discipline to cultivate the mind and insight uh if one takes intoxicants then one may not be able to progress at all or even if one makes progress one will not be able to cultivate knowledge properly it will it will weaken one's mind and insight because alcohol or intoxicants tend to cause in neg- can tend to cause negligence and failure failure in abstaining from what should be abstained and failure in observing what should be observed because one is intoxicated one fails in commission and commission therefore buddha has prohibited the intoxicants never encourages taking intoxicants so the abstention from intoxicants 
is not mentioned in the ten mis- misconduct separately if one indulges in intoxicants then one will not be able to conduct one's physical verbal mental behaviors in the right way so as to be blameless instead one's behaviors will become blameworthy is more dangerous in a crime when a crime is committed although the adviser of the crime is not directly involved physically in the, the committing of crime when the crime is revealed or when the crime comes to the surface then this adviser will become the prime accused or culprit so to with the toxicants although it is not separately mentioned uh, it can disrupt one's natural attitudes it might it would uh, encourage one to be, to uh, become intoxicated if one is if one gets intoxicated one will become mad and madness will lead to violence in this way one will easily indulge in other criminal actions as a result of intoxicants such as killing stealing sexual misconduct or speech and so on hence it is very dangerous because if one is able to abstain from it then one will be easy one will, will be able one will be uh, one will be able to sustain very easily uh, the physical and uh, verbal conduct so although this abstention from intoxicants is not separately mentioned in this ajiva tamakasila it is it can be it is presumed to be included and a kamisu mecha chara that is uh, abstention from sexual misconduct in the ajiva tamakasila uh we are not prohibited from taking meal in the afternoon vigala bhojana whereas in the normal eight precepts of bhojana sila we are prohibited from taking meals in the afternoon there is a difference and also in the first ajiva ramaka sila we are not prohibited from entertainments dancing singing beautifying ourselves whereas in the eight precepts of bhojana sila we are prohibited from such activities so it needs to explain why these things are prohibited in the bhojana sila especially for for us who have come here to practice meditation and we have vowed to abstain from his sensual pleasures to extinguish the impurities oppressive defilements uh it is advisable to abstain from taking meals in the afternoon we got a bhojana and we abstain from beautifying uh, ourselves uh, and also abstaining from abstaining from uh, the sitting or lying on luxurious beds and seats so in the ajiva tamakasila the man and wife will be able to live freely uh enjoying their life such as entertainments music and so on defying themselves and sleeping or sitting on luxurious beds and seats there is no prohibition in this ajiva tamaka sila it is a very light uh, livelihood so from by practicing ajiva tamaka sila we can progress easily towards the practice of the normal eight precepts that is upasita sila this uh, we shall explain tomorrow why we have to practice 
this Obhasada Sila, the ten precepts and so on, uh, will be explained in more detail. And that's all for today.